Hey guys, I'm Jenny Wallach with the Wallet Group here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Thanks for hanging out with me this afternoon. I'm super grateful for you. Every Friday I've been doing these little ask me anythings just because a lot of times we get, I get hit up with just questions in general and I'm like, let's just all get together and talk about different topics. So please always let me know if there are different topics you wanna to chat about because we can always continue to learn and grow together. And I see so many familiar faces and I'm so happy to see you guys here today. I'm letting everybody else in the Zoom room who wants to chat and ask questions, please feel free to utilize the chat box. I also want to plug real quick, I do have an upcoming session of Mirror My Business. This is a place where I take three hours in a workshop setting of sharing all the things that we do in our business with the actual checklist and the systems and the tools. So whenever you're asking me questions about how do I do this event or this system, you will get it in class. So I see lots of familiar faces who have hung out with me there and I appreciate you guys. All right, so let's kick off this party with the reason why y'all are here. There's this thing called the promise and we call it our promise. Tony calls it the promise. And I know that there's different versions of it. Mm -hmm. And the point of it is to set up our clients in advance for sharing that we have a goal of delivering such a great experience that by the time we get to the end of it, that they will be such raving fans, they'll either share a referral with us, super awesome, or even a review. So I know Tony has taught on this, he has a system in place, and you're just rocking it. So I'm gonna pass it on over to Tony Baroni. Introduce yourself, TB, and share with everyone what all y'all do in The Promise. Yeah, thanks, Jenny. Appreciate it. Isn't it pretty awesome what Jenny's created through a Facebook page? I mean, she kind of sets the standard, right, for what's possible and training and I appreciate your friendship and all you've done for me. And you know, thanks for having me back on, on your uh, many, many different webinars. I don't know if I've done this one specifically in the past, but yeah, so the promise. Let, let's get into some material here. So really the promise, you know, and I'm going to give you a little bit of the backstory. Um, I guess before I do that, for those that don't know me, I'm Tony Baroni. Um, I run the Tony Baroni team in Tampa Bay um, and Orlando. So we have um, a team of about 18 people. Last year, we served 308 families for about 95 million. And uh, we, uh, that was a uh, um, really awesome year. We grew by almost 100 units. And I attribute that to really what I'm going to talk about today is definitely probably the number one reason why we were able to do that. So I'm going to share with that everything uh, today with you guys on on how we went about that. So back up to 2017. I'm sitting in the crowd at one of these conventions back when we could go right and um, there's a guy on stage um, that starts talking about the promise named Mike Hicks. And Mike Hicks uh, really laid out how he did the promise. And I thought to myself, wow, that's what we do, but we do it for reviews and we don't really ask for referrals. And as I was doing less and less business myself, I realized I did a poor job training my team how to get referrals from their clients. And the bottom line is what I came to the realization I, that was on me, right? And then also clients will give you, will give you business, right? So if you do a great job for them, so I had this stuck in my mind, if they'll give me a five-star review, why are they not giving me more referrals, right? And I thought, well, hey, dummy, you didn't train your team to do that, right? And then you haven't set the right expectations with your clients. So, okay, we need to roll up our sleeves and get to work. So January 2018, we rolled out the promise as a team. And, um, you know, we went on this journey with Tony uh, about trying to figure this out, right? And it's been a bumpy road along the way. And, and we really just wanted to get it going. And um, that's probably my superpower is getting things going. And I'm not worried about it being messy at first. Um, I'm just worried about the end result. And I'm not afraid to try things. And if it doesn't work, I have no emotional attachment to it. And uh, this just kind of caught on with our team and it's continued. So we go from 
2018, 2019, um, 2020, 2020, we really started getting the momentum of doing this, right? Uh, now it's in our pre-listing packets. It's the first page when we open our pre-listing package. It's the first page in our buyer guides, right? It's the first conversation our ISAs have when they set an appointment with people is, hey, when so-and-so comes out, they're gonna talk to you about the promise and what that means to them and what that's gonna mean for you. Just so you know, give you a heads up, you can read about it in the pre-listing packet. Um, <clears throat> so um, I can kind of take this a million directions. Um, so I would love to, you know, Jenny, if you have any thoughts or any questions people have, we can kind of go in and, and go about it any which way. Well, I love all that. And I think you've laid the great found work foundation for, you know, you you realize that there was a gap. There was a gap between how you were just naturally doing business and generating referrals and reviews because of your entrepreneurial spirit. And then when you needed to start leveraging it to your team members, they weren't getting the same results. So you need, you saw that you needed to go to P, purposeful. And so, Absolutely. And so the promise is a system. It is, it's it really checklist. is. There's accountability. And there's tracking. So talk about the details, Tony. Yeah, so some of the details on it. Um, I think the, the number one thing for me that became natural was at the closing table, I was always asking clients for referrals, right? Because I came from the, the world of ex expired listings. And, you know, back in 2007, 8, 9, 10, I called a home 100 expireds a day. And so it became my way of giving myself the day off. If I was able to get referrals from clients, I would give my the next day off um, and not not call, not need to call a hundred people, right? So I'm like, okay, I set the appointment, I'm I'm good to go. The other thing I discovered along the way is the people in your world um, that refer you are going to be very very high conversion, and they're also going to be very very um, happy right from the beginning, right and Awesome people know other awesome people, right? As the saying goes. And I find that is definitely the case with the promise. So, you know, from the details, um, we really go from, um, I'll take it from the beginning to end for how we do it, right? So I, I touched on it earlier. We're gonna mention it if it goes to our ISA department, which a lot of our appointments go start there they're gonna just mention it, right? And they're not gonna go into details. They're just gonna mention it, plant that seed for the buyer specialist or the listing specialist that's going out. Or let's say jumping on Zoom, right? Because that's an option now that we do quite, quite often. And we're really starting right with that. Um, the salesperson goes out. That's really the first thing they talk about. Hey, is it okay if I share what our one goal is um, for you during this transaction, if you choose to go with us? And they're going to say, well, yeah, of course. So our goal is to give you the best real estate experience you could ever imagine receiving. That is our goal. That's my goal. That's our team's goal. We want to make sure you know that up front. And um, if we were able to do that, how would that make you feel? You know, and they're going to say, that would be great. Or as the skeptical people will say, I'll see it when I believe it, right? Or I'll believe it when I see it or, or whatever the case may be. So then we're going from there to asking the next question we're going to say is, would it be okay if we ask for, if we talk about the two things we expect? And they'll say, yeah. Yeah, what are they? And I'll say, okay, the first thing is between um, now and closing, we want to have you so impressed and thrilled about our service that you put us in touch with someone else that has real estate need that we can serve, okay? So would you be willing to do that for us, okay? And they're gonna say yes, 90% of the time. Of course I would do that. 10% of the time they're gonna say, well, you know, if you do a good job for me and then I'll just say, yeah, this is not unless we do an amazing job. I mean, we're doing a five-star experience and we wouldn't even ask for your, any more business if we didn't deliver that on our end. So are we clear, right? So that basically is setting expectations, right? And then the second part, we get an agreement there 
we're going to then say, okay, at the end, we want to know, we want to get feedback from you. The way we get feedback is going to be having you do some online reviews for us on seven key websites, because we don't know how we did unless you tell us. So does that make sense? Oh yeah. I, yeah, I'm a big review person. They'll say, or they'll say, I hate reviews. I'm never going to do reviews, you know? And then you say, okay, well, would you do one review for us? Right. So so um, once you get an agreement, you're like, okay, great. So is it okay if I tell you what the promise is not? And they'll say, yeah. From there, you're then I explain real estate, right? So we can, there's things we can control, there's things we can't control, okay? So not everything's gonna go exactly perfect all the time because there's this, these people called human beings involved in the process, right? And that's mortgage lenders, that's title, that's, other co-broke agents, there's mother-in-laws, there's every, every person under the sun can create issues potentially during this transaction. But here's the thing, when those issues arise, we're gonna be the ones to get you through it because we have tons of experience and we're gonna make sure we work together through those solutions. And that's where we really shine to be honest, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, because Everyone can do everything perfectly when things go smooth. It's when they don't go smooth. And that's really where we add the most value. So I just want to be clear, it will not be a perfect scenario all the time, but we will have the solutions to get you through it, to get you to the closing table. And then at the end, that's our expectations. Any questions on that, right? And they're going to say, no, no, no. Okay, great. Let's get into some of the marketing stuff, right? And that's our listing presentation. Buyers is very similar. So I'm going to stop there. Does anyone have any questions about that specifically? I'll uh, chime in with what um, Joel is asking in the chat. He's saying, um, Tony, this was your vision and, and something that you just naturally were, were doing anyway. Is this a part of the onboarding process or are you training, personally training the team members? There is not a week that doesn't go by that we don't talk about training with the promise on our huddles, typically on our huddles, but or our team meetings, but typically on huddles, we're going over that where we're scripting through it during the huddle, um, which is 9 a.m. Um, every day during the week, Monday through Friday. A couple of exceptions where we have other things happening, but like Monday's 9.35 is when we, we do because we do a scoreboard in the morning reporting all our numbers. So, um, you know, that's really, you know, that's really it. I'm really big about people making it their own versions for themselves to make it work because the more, the more it sounds natural and you're, you have that conviction in your voice that that is really what you want to deliver, the better it's going to come across to clients because you do this wrong. It could come, a, come across that you're shaking them down, right? That you're, my gosh, I haven't even agreed to work with Tony and he's already asking me for business my gosh, he's kind of cocky, right? Or he's got an ego. So you got to, you got to know how to present it to work for yourself. Right. And, and the other thing we, I would say, once you get going, every person needs to introduce it. Right. So then if it's a listing, it's going to go to our listing manager and my listing manager, Lewis is going to say, you know, here, I'm sure you've heard about the promise, right? Okay. And, and, and here's the deal guys, the first year, that question would get asked and our listing manager would say, I've never heard of the promise, right? So then I'm like, what? I'm going to bang heads, right? But the bottom line is the ISA missed it. The salesperson missed it. And then it got to the listing manager and he caught it. And then as a team of accountable people, we had to be open with our communication on like, hey, you know, I think you forgot to mention it. And then, you know, judge people. What, what's the, the saying, Jenny, you know? Um, you judge others by their actions and yourself by your intentions, right? That's a great, a great saying that, so then you'd ask, right? And then the, the listening agent may say, you know what? I never even met with them. They just signed the paperwork. And so I never even got a chance to present. So before I go accusing someone else, you got to understand maybe he needs to go back and talk about that, right? So you have to be pretty open-minded, especially if you have a team. If you're a solo agent, hey, this is pretty simple, right? Like it's it's all one person delivering it. If it's you and just an EA, I'd say it's a little bit easier um, as well. So it goes to listing agent. He's going to say his version. 
hey, here is my version of what I think the promise is for me to you. It's that you aren't ever asking me a question. I'm actually answering your question before you even know you have the question. So that's my goal as we work together. Then it goes from listing manager to closing coordinator. The closing quarter coordinator may say, you know, um, something very similar, right? Like, hey, I want to make sure um, I'm telling you what's next before you even ask. That's my version of the promise. If I'm able to do that, would that be good? Also, every week I'm going to ask you, how am I doing so far with the promise? I want to make sure I'm delivering that. So that is uh, going to year three. I think that's really important that we're diving really into that now. Like now every on your weekly update, you're asking. So if you had to rate us today on a scale from one to five, what would you score us on delivering the promise so far? And, well, I don't know what the promise is. Oh, wow. We need to explain that again, right? Well, I'd give you a five. Awesome. We're, we're going to get a review at the end of this, right? Unless we screw it up. I'd give you a four. Okay, well, a four, what would make it a five? And they say, well, the lender is really irritating me or the title company messed something up. Then you have the opportunity to explain that's not you, right? And which is so important, so, so important to ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. And then you get all the way to closing, right? And so say we're at the closing table or you're doing it virtually now, whatever the case may be, you need to ask the feedback, right? So, hey, I'm checking my, I'm checking uh, everything from the file from when we started working together to now. And I'll tell you what, Joel, uh, I don't see that I actually compelled you to earn a referral. So I just wanna make sure I have it right. Was there anyone you referred to me that we maybe missed on our end? And they're going to say, well, no, no, I, 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 didn't run in, I didn't run into anyone, Tony. Sorry. I, I would refer you, though. And then you're like, okay, now you know you, you should have the review, right? Because they, they were happy. If not, and then that point, the next part I would say is, hey, Joel, can I ask a favor of you? And he's going to say yes. I'm going to say, let's extend that, okay? Can we do a six-month extension on you know, if you run into someone? And here's the bottom line, Joel. We want to work with more awesome people just like you. So if you can introduce me to someone with real estate needs, we promise we're going to take care of them just like we did you. Um, would you be willing to do that? Yep. Okay. Awesome. So when that happens, would you mind doing an intro via text to both of us by introducing us? My, I've noticed our conversion comes so much higher that we're able to help them because you connect us via text. So thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate that. And you're still, you still remember the second part of the promise about the reviews. You remember that? Awesome. So I'm going to send you a link right now that you can do all the, uh, all the reviews all in one place on our website. Um, it's tonybaroni.com backslash reviews. And then you can actually do all of them all in one place. Are you still willing to do that for me? You know I will. Oh, awesome. Joel, I wish I could clone you. You know, I'm going to miss you. You know, here, here's the thing. Like Keller Williams doesn't hand me new clients. So I'm so grateful you chose us. I don't know if you know this, but thousands of people have the real estate license here in Tampa Bay and Orlando. And you chose us. And I so appreciate that. So thank you so much for delivering your end of the promise. I went ahead and emailed you the link. And if you have any questions ever, or if there's anything I can help you with, I want you to tell me, okay? So the other thing, Joel, is, is there any services you're gonna need in your new home? I'm gonna, eventually, yeah. Okay. So, you know, if you need a landscaper, if you need a pressure washer, if you, this is like third level promise, right? It's like, I'm connecting them to be their solution forever for anything they need, right? So. I don't want you to pull up and look at read reviews on people. I want you to call me. You have my cell phone, right? So if you need anything, you contact me and we're going to give you the next thing. Then one next thing we're doing as a team, by the way, is we, we created on our website a password protected vendor list. So, you know, they can go there and it's all in one place. And we're able to, you know, if Jenny's on my team, um, which the offer has always been standing, she knows that. Um, you know, and say, 
back uh, Jenny's password. She'd have Jenny at TonyBroni.com. That, that sounds so good. That sounds so great. Don't you think, Jenny? And then the password would be, you know, vendors 2020 or whatever. So then, you know, people are able to, we're able to track who is sending out vendors and who's in communication with clients trying to help them. And by the way, help our vendors, let's call them unpaid salespeople that support us, right? And that's the big, big picture is, uh, you know, you take care of them, they'll take care of you. And you need really a good spear for clients to, to be able to take care of them, right? So anyway, I went off on a little bit of tangent, which I, I have the tendency to do. I want to hop in for a sec because there's so many layers of accountability and opportunity inside of the promise. I mean, just imagine, and Tony, I know you as a team, you talk about it every week and you track who, at, who, who closed, who asked for the referral, did we get the referral, and everything must be measured is what I've yes. said. And so yeah. talk about what that looks like for you guys. Yeah, so during, uh, the, the first thing is we do a scoreboard on Monday mornings at nine, we can jump on a call at nine o'clock and our coach leads it and goes through um, a bunch of metrics, right? That would look like contacts. If you think of bold, for those that have taken bold, it's very similar to that with some things added. So contacts, um, number of hours lead generated, um, listing appointments set, limit, listing appointments met, um, listings taken, buyer appointments set, met, agreements, right? And then we, we actually go into, did you ask for, how many referrals did you ask for? How many did you receive? How many reviews did you ask for? How many you receive? And anyone that's a, a number, right? Other than zero, there's a last name attached to it, right? So just a whole nother level of accountability, right? So I see Katie Holmes on here, you know, if it, Holmes is the last name, right? And I say Holmes and then someone that, else on the team is counting homes as well well was that a team lead or did they generate that lead and i want to know that as a team because i want all of us building the business together and not just you know being all focused on the team so we want the last name and then we roll into a lead integration call is what we call it and we go through every lead that came in that last week and so we'd say homes okay homes yeah that one's on the calendar i'm going to see them tomorrow at one o'clock and and if someone double counted it we're going to make sure they understand you know hey if it came from the team you won't count it in that category you'd count it in your category and then if they got a referral how did the referral come in and what's the plan of calling them and contacting them to make sure we take care of them so that's uh that's how we do it and then our team meeting we actually go through and at the end of every transaction we we go through the, the promise section of our team meeting on the agenda and we say 123 Main Street, it sold for 380,000, great job, Craig, awesome job. It looks like the source was an agent referral from Jenny Wolick in Tulsa, she's the best. And then we're gonna go into referral. Did we get a, re did we ask for a referral? Did we get a referral yet is what I always said. Did we get, and I lead that myself, right? And then I go into, did we get a referral or review yet? yes or no, and then it triggers the salesperson, the closing coordinator, oh my gosh, I need to follow up with them. Of course, they'll do a, a review for us. They told me they would, and then they circle back, and then at, we have our ISAs do a two-week checkup after closing, and their question is, on a scale from one to five, did we deliver the promise to you? And they say a five, okay, awesome, anything we can do for you? If they say four, we're asking for feedback, and then we're logging that in to make sure we're, we're delivering it, right? So that's our system with it. Something I realized as, as we implemented the promise is that um, you got to deliver an amazing client experience if you're going to promise that you are. So that really steps up your game. I want everyone to hear that because um, it's you're afraid to ask how I'm doing or how we're doing if you haven't delivered an amazing client experience. So this will really up your game when it comes to your systems and your communication with your clients. Now, Gosh, I love that, Jenny. I mean, it, it's nothing happens without the customer experience, right? And it, I'm, I'm obsessed with reviews. 
I'm obsessed with making sure we're delivering on our end. And if we don't, I'm obsessed about making it right. You know, so at the end of the day, you know, I think that itself is going to help you grow and, and make sure as you build a team, especially right, that you make sure everyone's on the same page. The other thing I've learned, it attracts people to that or to your organization that think like you, right? Like, I don't want, I don't really care about a five-star experience. I just want paid, right? Well, they're probably not going to join my team considering we invite them to our scoreboard on Monday and they hear all this accountability and they hear, you know, did you get a review? Did you get a referral? And they're like, oh, I don't want to be that accountable, you know? And that, that's great because it saves us all time. The other piece that I found over the years is that um, sometimes it may be a challenge that they yet have not conquered for uh, administrative behavioral styles to sure. talk this language. How do you work through it with them that they feel more comfortable asking these questions? Yeah, and it's just, uh, it's a lot of conversations around it. I mean, I had one this morning on, hey, are you asking weekly if you're delivering the promise? Like, you know, that's a real, that's a one-on-one -on -one coaching session of breaking it down to the level. And now we have, we went even further. We have something called an eight by eight. So we found there, it's really a 10 by 10. So there's 10 points through the transaction that we feel like needs to be brought up. And so we have a spreadsheet that's separate from everything else we do. And everyone's got to go in and, and initial that they did their part. So at the end, for example, it may be your score may be a seven on that one, right? And you're like, well, we have room for opportunity. We missed this part, you know, and, and then you look for patterns and you say, well, okay, this middle is where we kind of miss it. We, we're not talking about it enough. And so then you rate yourself, but that's getting like really detailed, really, it's almost daunting to be honest, but it really points out where we're having issues. The power of the promise is that you could literally, if performed at such a high level, you could double your business by simply implementing this. If you already were helping 50 families in a year and you received a referral from all of them, done. How amazing is that? And how much did you spend on the acquisition of that new client? That's why it's so exciting. Yeah, it really is, Jenny. And the and like I, like I said, I'm not trying to toot our own horn, but we went from 212 units to 308, and it's because of what I'm talking about. It really is. Um, the scoreboard definitely has something to do with it. Of course, amazing people on our team, um, hiring the right people. But the promise, really, it's setting that expectation. And, and here's the beauty of it. Uh, next, I'm about to list the next property, um, and it will be the 40th home I've sold with my clients, 40, right? Started with a sign call back in 2007, right? And we're, they want to have a sign that says 40 and all this stuff. But think of the revenue that that's created my family and our team throughout all these years. And that's the kind of, you know, you hit what I call an influencer. I'm not talking a social influencer. I'm talking a real influencer, like someone that actually in, in, your world in your town, like they respect, they listen to, they take their advice. You hit someone that you hit a gold mine with a person like that. What's they can refer you to, to 36 is what I found. My top one is a hairdresser, hairstylist. She's given me 36 referrals that have closed. Right. So, and that's the exciting part is it's so, so little, but yet it makes such a big difference if you're just setting expectations. Right. Yeah. Well, I see a couple of questions here and then we'll wrap up. Uh, Chris is asking in the cons consult itself, when do you bring up the promise? The very beginning. Yeah. The very beginning. Hey, I'm Tony. Hey, can I tell you what we're all about? And we're going to go right to the promise. Yeah. And then Joel is saying that, of course, we are um, asking and the entire team is a part of the promise, but how are you truly holding them accountable? I think it's your weekly conversations, right? Well, we do, uh, we do a percentage after, um, Joel. So when on that, basically our closing spreadsheet, let's call it, um, we track where we're at, at the end of the year or quarterly end of the year, like 
okay, how many people, what percentage are we at for reviews? What percentage are we at for referrals? And so it's a real number attached to it. And then let's say we get a review comes in. The way we do that is I post it personally into our internal Facebook page. And then it triggers everyone to celebrate it, right? And then the activity that I want, we're focused on. And um, then it logs it for our admin to go back to the spreadsheet and cross reference the name. And sometimes it's a weird, you know, XXX QRL and no one knows who they are. So we may need to dig and figure out who that review came from. And then we're going to put it on the spreadsheet and make sure we're tracking it. Yeah. Hey, um, one cu a couple more questions here that I think are pretty important to touch on if you have a minute. Um, sometimes, Tony, they say they're going to give you a review and they just never get around to it. So I know you have a system in place to continue to nudge them gently, right? I've never had that happen, actually. <laughs> <I'm just> gonna... <laughs> of course. Yeah. So, you know, my opinion, this is the best script for that, right? So um i'm gonna pick on katie again so katie you know you said you do a review what i'm doing i'm gonna send it right now to you and I, i'm if you go to tonybaroni.com go to reviews um click on reviews you'll see how we have it set up all on one page to read all our reviews all on our page to to write all our reviews and that's so key because it makes it so simple not to get lost in an email so what i would do if i were were you and i'd suggest text them the link right then from your phone to them send it to if it's two people on the closing or three people in the closing or four send them all of them right and then if you're doing a live closing you're going to send them a photo anyway right so go ahead and create the text and send them a photo of the happy closing photo together and and then i'm going to say okay great so i know you've got a lot a lot of things going on in the next week or so I'm going to go ahead and follow up with you next week just to check in on you guys, right? That's one script. If you email it, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and uh, call you next week and make sure you got my email. I know it can get lost in spam and stuff like that. But really what I'm saying is, Katie, I'm following up with you. You know, I'm, I'm coming. I'm going to earn my end of the bargain. I delivered a five-star experience and you're going to give me a review basically because that's how much I, I believe that we earned it. And then it's just a matter of follow-up. And then I'm going to follow up the next week and I'm going to make them not feel uncomfortable. I'm going to say, hey, I know you have a million, million things. Probably the last thing on your mind is to do a review for me right now. So I get it. Don't worry about it. But do you have a time frame? When do you think you, you would have an opportunity to do that? Um, and they're going to say, well, give me two weeks or whatever. And then again, you say, I'll follow up with you then and just make sure everything's good. See if you had any more questions. By the way, Katie, is there any vendors that you are gonna need at your house um, since you moved? I just wanna make sure we connect you with the best of the best. So happy to do so. And usually that second time is when they do it, to be honest. So zero to 30 days after closing. So it's follow up, like all things. And then I know that also we just, um, we're running one right now, it's just a review contest. And it's just on our marketing plan in each year that a couple times a year, we're gonna, that's an opportunity to catch up on reviews, maybe from clients who hadn't gotten to it yet. And yeah, and our, our lead gen is on Wednesdays for our, we call it R&R &R reviews and referrals, and that's follow up on those. So, you know, that may be someone that says, I have a client, I have a coworker, let me talk to him for you. I want to get permission for you to call. That's when you you make sure you follow up with them on Wednesdays yeah. is really um, what our system is around it. And it can go, it's really Wednesday morning lead gen is where we focus on. I like it. Yeah. So again, it's a system and it's time block. Okay, one final question. And this one, uh, everyone always wants to know the, the magic pill on this one. What do you give to clients who share a referral with you? For clients specifically? Right. So we really were, were not doing a lot until two weeks ago, our director of operations came and said, listen, we've got to, we've got to have a better system for this, um, for agent referrals and for client referrals. So we have them look a little bit different. Um, the agent referrals this year, we're going to be doing a basket um, that is customized with some of our stuff. And 
um, some Florida stuff together, kind of branding us to Florida per se. Like a box. It's a basket. It's actually a basket. Oh, a box. The other night, yeah, that was that got out of hand. Uh, not a box that Josh Anderson sends, but uh, yeah, a basket. And then for our clients uh, locally, we're still trying to figure it out. It's on our agenda. It was on our agenda for leadership this week. And we're coming back with ideas this week on what we're actually going to give. But it needs to be something that we can get out immediately and make sure they feel appreciated. Another thing we agreed on, it will not have to do with anything about closing. It will have everything to do about the act of the referral. So, um, and then we have to create a, we have to create a better system around it. Um, for agent referrals, we were doing koozies, TV sunglasses, and a, a postcard that, that in a, in an envelope that branded us to Florida. And we're like, we need to step it up. That's, that's not enough, right? We need but to really message, make sure that. Um, the message to me though, Tony, is that it doesn't really matter. You're going to share gratitude. You're going to say, thank you. You're going to help them. Uh, you know, <laughs> Katie's showing. <laughs> That's funny. So I just feel like um, the the mess. And so what we do, honestly, is if we received a client, a sphere referral, then they instantly get one of those six packs of brownies from AM cards. So you do want it systemized so that something happens right away. I'm with you, Tony. Of course, I want to give more love. And if it's an agent referral, we send out a thanks a latte gift card, you know, to reward the behavior. And that's what yeah. it's all about. Well, let's get to final words. We've gone past our time and I appreciate every minute you have shared. Any final parting words that you have, Tony Baroni, on people implementing the promise into their business? You know, it doesn't have to be called the promise. It, it can be packaged any which way you want, but I, I think you're in a, you're going to be missing something major if you're not asking for a review and you're not trying to get a referral. So to me, they're the ultimate goal of success, of measuring your success. And, you know, we're at 1,850 five-star reviews and we, no way we would have been there um, without hyper-focus about it, right? So um, I think we have a long way to go. Never think you've arrived and continually try to improve the system over time. And, um, you know, just have a good expectation conversation is really dialing it in on that of what your expectation is. And then, of course, what you're going to deliver them. And then I think it becomes kind of a, an obligation almost for them to give you a, a review at a minimum. And then a referral is kind of the icing on the cake, right? And you get both, that, that's the ultimate goal. So I think it's just super simple. Well, I love all of this. And for all you guys that are, are dying without a written script, I actually have the original Mike Hicks, The Promise script. And so I'll share it in the file section of your journey with Jenny. And then you can, of course, morph it and blend it into uh, using it and utilizing it for your own team. And uh, you guys have a super amazing day. And thank you so much, Tony Baroni. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. All right. Bye, guys. Have a good one.